On December 3, 2013, the president officiated the groundbreaking ceremony for the world-class Greenfield Terminal at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. While looking at what will eventually be the 20 million passenger terminal, the construction of this new Greenfield Terminal for an estimated 20 million passengers per annum, and eventually a second runway that is planned for this airport. That's huge. That's ambitious. Will enable Kenya attain her National Vision 2030 aspiration. Welcome to the new gateway for Africa. Newsflash. Let's now take you to a story that has shaken the air transport industry in Kenya. The construction of the Greenfield Terminal at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport has been suspended. Kenya has scrapped plans to construct a new terminal building at Nairobi's Jomo Kenyatta. Kenyatta. Authorities have shelled a plan to build an entirely new terminal at its main airport, Jomo Kenyatta International. Yep, the project got cancelled, leaving many Kenyans with unanswered questions. Was this just another of the many empty promises the government never fulfilled? For better understanding, it's essential to look back at the airport's history and why building a new terminal was proposed in the first place. In 1945, the British colonial government started discussing the need for a new airport. They were concerned that the existing airport in Islay that served as a dual military and civilian airport was inadequate. The runways were short with limited space for expansion needed to handle bigger civilian airliners. On the other hand, Wilson Airport was the general aviation charter business hub. In addition, Nairobi had become an important transit between Europe and South Africa. Ultimately, a decision was made to build a new civilian-only airport. Construction of the airport started in January 1954. The engineers utilized forced labor extensively, most of whom were Mau Mau prisoners. Finally, in March 1958, the airport was officially opened as Embakasi Airport. The airport quickly grew into the third busiest in Africa after Cairo and Johannesburg, requiring the expansion of the terminal building to its practical limit. Initially, the plan was to build a new international terminal adjacent to the existing one. In addition, a future runway would also be constructed parallel to the existing one, placing the terminals in the center. However, to complete this at the original terminal area, the construction would have required the relocation of Embakasi village, which was home to 90% of the airport employees. Therefore, the consensus was to build the new terminal to the southeast of the existing runway. The old Embakasi airport terminal would be abandoned and repurposed for office space and aviation-related facilities. The future runway location would be 1.25 miles southeast of the existing one, placing the terminal buildings in between, which was the original vision. Here is the master plan from the original proposal document submitted to the World Bank for funding. You can see the planner's vision for the runway and the future identical terminals, which would have been built in phases as needed. The first phase was the construction of the main terminal that we know today, which was between 1972 and 1977. President Moy officially opened the new airport in 1978 and changed the name to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, honoring the country's first president. Per the master plan, the new airport would meet demands until 1988, hence the plan for additional terminals expansion phases. Fast forward and Nairobi became a top business destination. The tourism industry was doing well and Kenya Airways joined Sky Team. JKIA had transformed into an important transit hub. But unfortunately, by the early 2000s, the airport's facilities were being strained beyond their limits. Transit passengers routinely complained of insufficient seating, lack of food places, poor lighting, and even inadequate toilets. You see, when the airport was built, the design was to handle 2.5 million passengers. I can tell you that the airport hit its capacity in 1994 with a 2.8 million passenger throughput. By 2005, the airport handled more than 4.2 million passengers, well over its capacity. Unfortunately, the original master plan, which had plans for additional terminals, seemed to have been lost and forgotten. After being shamed internationally and being rated as one of the worst airports in the world, the Kenya Airports Authority finally woke up from its slumber. First, the authority announced a roadmap for development that would involve renovations on Units 1, 2, and 3, and construction of Unit 4 from scratch. Later, these units were renamed Terminal 1A, 1B, 
1C and 1D. However, an even more ambitious airport project dubbed the Greenfield Terminal was part of the flagship projects announced in 2008 for the Kenya Vision 2030. This world-class terminal would be built from scratch with a capacity of 20 million passengers, 8 air bridges, 50 international check-in counters and an additional runway. Hmm, that's familiar. Remember the original master plan? Anyway, the Greenfield Terminal opening schedule was sometime in 2017. And so the wait began. Then a massive fire broke out this morning at the International Airport in Nairobi, Kenya. Airport. Firefighters battled the fire for close it's to nine hours. The largest hours. airport in East Africa, officials diverted all incoming flights. No injuries are reported. And now we are back to where we started. President Uhuru Kenyatta was on hand to commission the construction of a new greenfield terminal. In December 2013, the president officially broke ground at the construction site of the future greenfield terminal. Three years later, in April 2016, KAA cancelled the project. Here is the statement. The Kenya Airports Authority wishes to inform members of the public that the JKIA greenfield terminal project has been terminated with immediate effect by the authority. The decision was based on prevailing operational, economic and financial dynamics which have been on a downward trend over the last three years. KAA and even the president clarified the cancellation in later reports. But the truth of the matter is what happened? When uh, the terminal at Jomo Kenyatta burned down, we then went on an emergency program of rehabilitating the existing airport and adding additional structures. This involved fast tracking the remainder of the construction of the 2.5 million capacity Terminal 1A and building a prefabricated Terminal 2 with a capacity of 2.5 million. As a result, the two new terminals combined with the new existing ones increased the total capacity of the airport to 7.5 million. Plans were also in line to increase the capacity to 10.5 million once Terminal 1B, 1C and 1D renovations were complete. The upgrades for those terminals are currently ongoing in 2022. The project was also riddled with controversies. KAA had paid a down payment of 4.3 billion shillings to the contractor. However, the contractor sued KAA for breach of contract. KAA, on its part, demanded back the 4.3 billion shillings paid as down payment. In August 2021, KAA Managing Director stated that plans were underway to revive the project. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.